And uh, some of the followers of Jesus actually wrote about what he did and what he said. And we call these four books the Gospels. Um, his followers were called. They were irresistibly drawn to him. And you might say that's happened to most of the people in this room. That we had an experience in our lives and they had an experience where they were called to him. And um, I called it Create Your Own Comfort Zone because they had to get used to an awful lot of new things when they were called to Jesus. And they began mixing with people they'd never mixed with before, people who were of different nationality, culture, background, and status. People who were not acceptable in society, they were the people that Jesus tended to hang around with. The unacceptable people was, was his comfort zone. His society were the outcasts. And he came in for a lot of criticism. And he preached to those people with the good news. The good news is meant to make them feel better. And I used the wrong word in the last talk. I said they called him a pedagogue. It was demagogue. And it's in the message. <laughs> you know, they said he's just a popularity seeker. He just says what people want to hear. Um, so... When he came in for that criticism, so did the disciples. People would say to, them, say to them, why aren't you doing this? Other disciples for other people do that. And, and they suddenly felt outcast themselves. But because they were so attached to him and they committed to him, they were willing to change what they regarded as their comfort zone. Jesus said, you, you will get persecuted. People won't like you. Um, but they didn't like me either. They didn't like me either, so don't expect to be any different. So they were in their comfort zone with their family and everybody loved them, and, and all of a sudden, they're out there, out of their comfort zone. And my message last time was, create your own comfort zone. Create your own new comfort zone. The Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit will show you how to step into the divine, so that you can be like him. Because Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing, he said to his disciples. Don't expect to go it alone. Religious people won't like you. People who are particularly legalistic, uh, that is, you know, rule orientated, they won't like you. So that's what I was speaking to before. They were out of their comfort zone. But as they moved forward, some of the disciples fell aside when they were challenged. But as, as those who stuck with them, they were okay. Now, I, I was talking last time about the comfort zone that is on the external of you. The external, outside of you. Your interactions with people. But the part two of the comfort zone was your inner life, your inner life. I don't know if you're aware, and, and I became aware through my life, that your inside, your spiritual life, is much, much bigger, I'm going to use another big word, I'm sure of this one, capacious, your inside of you is much bigger than your outside. Most people, and the people that you meet, they stick to the five senses and they don't believe anything. They can't taste, touch, see, feel. But Jesus talks about your inner life. And a lot of what he shared with his closest disciples was to do with their inner life. The word disciple, it means an apprentice. You stand beside the master. You see how he copes you see how he manages it, and you seek to follow what he's doing. Won't get it perfectly right, first time, second time, but you're still practicing what you believe is the best person that you can be, because that's what Jesus wanted. He wanted them to be the best person that they could be, the very best. So those who stuck with him, he, he invited them to come 
and be with him. And he spoke to them before all it, it all kicked off. That is with Jesus. He spoke to them before it all. That is, he was arrested. He was beaten up badly. He was killed. And he wanted to give them a lot of information and repeat and repeat and repeat. Because he knows that you learn through repetition a lot of the things that he'd said before. And at the end of John, in 14, 15, 16 and 17, that's worth a read. Scarlet, Scarlet, sit down. I've asked you not to, to wander around. Thank you. Now then, he told them that the Holy Spirit would come after he'd left to bring to mind everything he had previously taught. Now, if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, quite often you hear people say, oh, pray and read the Bible every day. Well, what's the most important part to read? The things that he said and did. Because you've got to get that in your head. Because if you want to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus, those are the things that are key to your life. That's in John 15 and John 14. And he said, if they continue, this was an if, if they continue to embrace his teachings, the Father and he and the Holy Spirit would come and make his home with them. It was dependent on them continuing to carry on as they were. Not to be perfect, but to following after him. He said, now, he didn't mean that somebody was going to physically walk into the house and, um, and say, right, I'm moving in. I'm going to sit down on your couch. I'm going to watch your TV. He was talking about the inner life. So if you think about it, you're, you must be very large inside because the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the Father, who made heaven and earth, can all fit inside you. So think of yourself as the TARDIS. So... The TARDIS is what you are. It might be that... Um, <laughs> just waiting for you, Thomas, to sit down. It might be that um, you don't think of yourself as, as uh, having much of an inner life. Everything's to do with your family, your job and everything. But Jesus used to go away and re-get in touch with his inner life, his father, and speak to him alone. And the disciples saw this. And this is one of the things that we must do. We must always be aware that there is somebody with us. This is how he prays. He prays for the disciples who are there. This is in 17, verse 20, carrying on. My prayer is not for you alone. I pray for those who believe in me through the message that you give them. So that's us. So just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us that the world may believe that you have sent me. So that's all a bit convoluted, isn't it? You are in me and I am in you. May they, these people, us, be also in you. It means that you can be in more than one place at a time. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought that you are a multidimensional being? You, I mean, if you, if you look at things that are on, um, on space programs, on, on, I've mentioned Doctor Who, all these things... That's more appropriate to imagine how you can be a multidimensional being. You may be here in your body, but you're in the heavenlies. How else can you help God bring heaven to earth if you're not up there and down there, right? So, so he, he said, you have the Holy Spirit and he comes to make his home with you. You are never separate and you are never alone. If you think you are, it's an illusion. In your heart, in yourself, you are not separate. 
you are not alone. And many people feel lonely and alone when they are Christians because they haven't read the words of Jesus and taken them in. They feel isolated. Now, it's happened to all of us that we all suddenly, we feel isolated, we feel alone. But then we have forgotten the words of Jesus. And we're all remembering our feelings and our our experiences, but we are not the sum total of our feelings and our experiences. As followers of Jesus, we are not alone. We are never separate. I once um, turned up at somebody's house and I rang them to tell them I was outside. I said, we're here. I forgot. They thought I was with somebody because I, I was having a, quite often, a we experience. And I said, we are here. And, and, and somebody came up and said, oh, I thought you had somebody with you. <laughs> We are here because you are we. You are we, you are not you. And that we includes all other believers as well as the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son. Amen. Go on then. You'll have to come here if you're going to read it. I'm going to have to... Yes, is it something... Just take your mask off, it looks a bit funny. <laughs> is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, this is my daily reading this morning, and I was thinking of reading it. Okay, it's a few couple of paragraphs. Let my peace protect your mind and heart. Remember that I am near and rejoice in my abiding presence. Spend ample time with me, presenting your request to me with thanksgiving. This is the way to receive my peace that trans transcends understanding. This is how I guard your heart and your mind. It's a collaborative, you and I together effort. You never face anything alone. <laughs> For Christians, aloneness is an illusion, <laughs> a dangerous one that can lead to depression or self-pity. The devil and his underlings work hard to cloud your awareness of my presence. It's crucial for you to recognize and resist their attacks. Fight back with my powerful word, which is living and active. Read it, ponder it, memorize it, speak it. Even if you're feeling alone, you can talk freely with me, trusting that I am with you always. The longer you communicate with me, the more convinced you'll become of my nearness. So it just was exactly what... It was um, exactly... Yeah. Um, do we turn this off? An illusion. Don't be fooled. There was a, a boy in our class who had to read something out and he said, don't be mizzled, he said. He meant misled. <laughs> He stood up at the... And we all roared. This is when we were reading round, you know. Don't be misled. Don't be misled. <clears throat> because your feelings are not who you are. Don't... If you, if you close your eyes, you can't see anything. And you think you're blind. But when you open your eyes, you can see. So he said the Holy Spirit is there to be your teacher. And to bring to mind everything that I have said. So when you need a lead in life, do you go to your friends? Do you go to, you may do. Uh, do you go to your family? You may do. But your main lead in life is the words and the character and the prompting of the Holy Spirit who brings Jesus into your life. If you continue to embrace all his radical teachings... I, you know, be ready to be out of your comfort zone, fine. Then he will make himself known. He's always there in you, but he can't really engage with you if you don't engage with what he's said and what he's saying. So he can be there like you can be with somebody and completely ignore them, can't you? Yeah. You know, you can be listening to somebody else going... <laughs> And somebody's sitting there going, no, 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 listen, no, no. 
<clears throat> he also said to go and make new followers. And the first thing that they had to tell the new followers was to change their minds. They had to have a different mindset. They had to have a different mindset about what happens inside of them and how they treat other people and how they treat people who are not acceptable. And the, one of the main things he left them he, that he said was to love one another. And this is how the disciples of Jesus were known to be to love one another. That was the way. They called it the way. They didn't call it being a Christian or going to church. They called it the way. So when he prays, he said, you're in me and I'm in you. Well, how does that go on then? It sounds like a bit of a conundrum, a bit of um, messing about. But no, he's actually talking about a state of being that you experience and that might put you out of your comfort zone. You may be used to worrying about things. You may be used to criticizing other people. That's your comfort zone. It's your shield. Well, I'm better than them. I don't do it like that. My kids uh, don't do that. My family don't do that. I don't do that. But Jesus said, no, you have to create a new comfort zone inside of you. That is based on my peace. He said, in this world you will have trouble. But he said, I will be providing the peace factor to help you cope with this and get through it and the wisdom to know how to behave. He said to the disciples, I have made you known and I will continue to make you known in order that you have the love for me that may be in them and I myself be in them. And he was talking to the Father. Quite often when he was, he was, he was talking to the disciples, he would, he would internally start talking to somebody else. Now, there's a, there's a name for people who talk to themselves, isn't there? You know, people go, oh, he's a bit nuts. He's talking to himself. But Jesus used to turn and he used to say, and he suddenly started to pray to the Father. And he said, he said Father, I have made you known to them. He was talking to the Father. And then, and I will continue to make you known to them. So be sure that even if you're making mistakes, you think, he will continue to make himself known. He will continue to make the Father known to you. He will continue. He will never stop so long as you are embracing his words. He said, because I so much want them to be in you, and I want to be in them, and I want us all to be together. He was creating a family life. So he would turn to the Father and he used to say things. In creating your own comfort zone, this is the most powerful aspect in knowing that you are never alone and you are never, ever separate. Amen. And this may be, have been something just as new to the disciples then, and it is to us now. You are big on the inside. At least if you don't like the people in your group, you can go home. At least you can go and enjoy your own company. But I'm afraid, in this aspect, you can't go anywhere. There is no going anywhere. Once you know about it, you know that the one who loves you the most is with you always. And however bad you feel about yourself, he doesn't see you in the same way. That's right. I've had to say to one or two of the children, you know, do this, don't do that. Does that make me love them any the less? I love them more because I care. We care for our children. So we help them and keep them safe. We never leave them alone. We don't ever have put them in an unsafe situation. And neither, it's the same with Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit. It's one of the greatest revelations ever that you are a TARDIS, that you have the divine living inside of you. And that is a personal relationship. You may think you're entirely alone in the house, 
but you never are. You may think you're really full of sorrow in your heart, but Jesus knew what sorrow meant. He experienced just what you're experiencing and worse. So don't think he can't understand that you feel bad about yourself. Some of these ideas will definitely put you out of your comfort zone. And in order to put yourself back in the comfort zone, you have to deal with your internal life and your attitudes and your thoughts. When I was reading in the Bible when I was a young woman, I was reading about being baptised in the Holy Spirit. I still am a young woman, thank you. I bow to that. <laughs> I'm only 20, thank you, Sam. Times, no, we won't do multiplication tables. Uh, uh, I must have been about 16, and I was reading in the Bible, because I thought everything in here was to do with me, you see, which it was, and um, about the baptism with the Spirit. <clears throat> Nobody told me at the time that to be baptised is to be dipped. And, uh, and it means that you're soaked through. You go in and you come out soaked through with the Holy Spirit. But I didn't want that because I thought, I don't want to be taken over by a foreign power. I want my free will. That sounds really scary. I'm not sure about this. And I, I had to ask somebody about it. I said, does this mean... You know, <clears throat> but I realized when I was filled with the Holy Spirit that I, it, it empowered me, it didn't take power away from me. Amen. It made me powerful, not powerless. It made me more love, not less loved. It didn't diminish me, it enlarged me. Amen. So if you haven't had that experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit, I do recommend that. And it says, continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Continue to receive extra boosts, as it were. You feel more assured. You feel closer. And you definitely don't feel alone because you are well aware of who is with you and who is empowering you. That's your new comfort zone. That's your new comfort zone. That's your new norm. That is your new norm. You become one with other people. You become one with Jesus. You are never separate. Your feelings have nothing to do with it. But he can come and help you with those feelings and make you feel different. Maybe, maybe you've never experienced to be loved unconditionally. So you're not used to being loved a lot. Maybe you've never had that idea that God would love you unconditionally. Maybe you think that he's a harsh judge. But you have to change your mind about God. He isn't a harsh judge. He does love you unconditionally. What do you think the... What do you think all those stories that Jesus told were about, about a lost coin and lost sheep and all this? You may not know if you can trust God not to judge you harshly. And you might think to yourself, I don't even like myself some of the time, so I'm sure God's going to be heavier handed than I am. You can be your harshest critic, but you have to move out of that and begin to believe what Jesus says, that... You are loved unconditionally. Amen. Just as we love children who are not always doing as they should be doing some of the time, then that is exactly how God is to you. He only sees the good in you. He, you're always together in the bad times, the sad times, the scary times, the hairy times. And in your best, happiest times. And he wants you to share those with him as well. That becomes your new comfort zone. I'm going to read to finish another prayer. If I can find it in here. Oh. 
Now, this is from Matthew 11, and it starts at 25, it goes up to 30. Jesus is talking about something else, and then it says, this is the message, abruptly, all of a sudden, never knew what I was going to do next, did you? All of a sudden, Jesus broke into prayer. So, he's with a lot of people. He's with disciples, he's with all the people. He's saying, thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You conceal your ways from sophisticated people and from know-it-alls. Well, I think actually, know-it-alls and sophisticated people can't access God anyway because they know it all, so they don't, they're not interested, are they? But spell them out clearly to ordinary people. Think about all the really straightforward stories that Jesus told. Yes, Father, that's the way that you like to work. So if you're an ordinary person, you, go, you, you join the club. Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father-son operation coming out of father-son intimacies in knowledge. No one knows the son of the way the father does, nor does the father know, nobody knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. That's what he said, he's not keeping it to himself. He's ready to share these things with you in your inner self. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. He's willing to go over things line by line in any way that you need it if you keep in touch with him. Are you tired, he said. Are you worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll live to learn freely and lightly. Freely and lightly is your new comfort zone. Freely and lightly, with nothing heavy on you, is your new comfort zone. The Holy Spirit helping you. The Father and the Son with you. And that may take a bit of getting used to because you're so used to worrying, fearing, being scared, being angry. But this is the way that Jesus leads. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for listening. <laughs>